So Luke, it's a momentous day today. You've got a little bit of news for everybody in the rugby league world. Just let us know what you, you've got to say. Yeah, momentous stroke, uh, sad day. Um, but yeah, the time has come, um, the uh, the dreaded R word. Um, but yeah, I've decided that I'm uh, going to retire at the end of the year. Um, the game's getting tougher. I'm getting older. <laughs> it's not getting any easier, but... Um, yeah, spoke to my family, spoke to, had a good chat with Daryl. He's probably been in pipeline for the last probably six weeks or so now. And obviously we had a, a decision to make uh, a contract to go again, which was in the contract or, or hang them up. And uh, yeah, the game's getting, uh, not getting any easier, as I said. And uh, the time has come, spoke to my family. Um, and um, massively uh, excited for that, for that next journey. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be coaching, staying on in rugby league and coaching head coach of the academy, which I'm, uh, I've kind of been filtering in already with the academy one night a week. Um, uh, and the love I have for that obviously makes that decision a little bit easier. Um, I, I think I've had, I think it's 17 years, it's hard to count. I think it's 17, 18 years now and um, I've absolutely loved my time as, as a rugby league player. Um, created some special memories with some special people but um, yeah the, I, I believe the time has come now to kind of um, move on and, and start that next chapter and and obviously we've signed Ollie Russell for next year, Mace is here and I think it's it's their team and, and let them run that, he's, uh, Ollie Russell great, a great lad and uh, he's a great player. Um, yeah and as I say I, I think the, 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 time, the time is now and uh, we can kind of plan and, and get sorted for next year so um, uh, sad day to be honest but um, I still love the game um, it just doesn't love me as much getting out of bed on a Monday morning is getting harder and harder and uh, I'm not available to train till at least Wednesday or Thursday which Daryl's not best pleased about especially at the minute being the only halfback but um, yeah that's um, it, it, it's been uh, a, a long time coming but uh, yeah, sad and happy, probably a mixed emotions. Well, Gailey, that's a huge announcement and I'm sure the whole of the Rugby League world would like to thank you for the last sort of decade, decade and a half of, of moments that you've created within Rugby League. Obviously, we can go through your clips and iconic moments for probably an hour or more and, and with the contributions that you've had to many, many different clubs throughout Super League and, and Championship. But when you were first having these thoughts and you're first discussing it with your, your better half and obviously your children and the rest of your family, how difficult were those conversations? Um, yeah, it, it's always difficult and I, I suppose you don't ever think the time's coming. Um, I probably knew deep down that um, you, 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 you couldn't go on another year. Um, Kirby still tries to convince me now and the kids. Um, but yeah, it, it's, always, it's always hard, you can sense the emotion in my voice, it's hard even to, um, to talk about it, but um, look, I've had, I've had many great times, many great memories, and um, memories to last a lifetime, and the, the, boys, the boys we've got here now are fantastic, um, great set of lads, and it's been a, a good year up to press, and look, obviously, I am retiring at the end of the year, I've still got, we've still got business um, on the pitch to do, and and I always said back end of last year that probably my biggest aim was, or the biggest driver was to get Wakefield up to back to the Super League in a b better position um, that went down. And look, Matt, we've had, obviously had a takeover. Matt and his family have been fantastic. We've got the coaching staff, Paul, and Shenny, Shenny uh, Kermore, and all the backroom staff who have been awesome. And as I say, the lads, the lads I've got now, I, I reckon that'll be the hardest bit. I, I come into training, you probably get hammered from eight o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the afternoon, and um, that I reckon that that social side will be, it'll be the hardest bit um, to kind of. Obviously, I'm still staying in the game, but instead of getting a flogging in pre-season, I'm now doing session plans and and and, and training clips and stuff like that. So look, I say hugely exciting. Um, on that front and the memories I've got are fantastic and I'd like to thank um, every club I've been at, um, I've, I've been at a few to be honest, um, from right from when I started at Leeds and 
all all the way through to Wakefield now, and I think I think I've been lucky in a regard uh, on the coaching side. I've been coached by some um, throughout throughout my career, some some unbelievable coaches from when I started at Leeds with John Bastian at 16. He gave you a great grounding in rugby league, made you a better rugby league player, but made you a better bloke as well. He, he's been massively important. On to Brian McDermott, um, who gave me my Super League debut. Um, to obviously Pauli, uh, I reckon I. I played my best footy under Pauli, uh, turned me to an England international. I'm talking about England, obviously Wayne Bennett, uh, the the kind of OG of coaching, um, fantastic, great bloke. Still chat, chat to Wayne now, and um, I, I kind of think if you can take that little bit of of um, of something from each coach and put your twist on it, um, I always say, and I can. I can find myself now even, I've probably done Shenny's head in for this last six weeks because uh, Shenny's transitioned, obviously Shenny took me under his wing at Castleford and um, he, he was part of obviously turning me into, into an international player and he's, um, he's gone on now to be my coach and seeing the, the step forward that Shenny's made as a coach, um, I'm always into him the last six weeks when I kind of know um, that I'm going to retire, I'm, I'm nicking his drills, I'm writing them down and um, I just had a meeting with him now, so uh, I've been into Shenny, and Shenny's been a massive help. Um, and I suppose if you take that that little bit of um, wisdom from each coach, um, yeah, I don't think you go far wrong. Because as I say, I've been I've been lucky and, and blessed to to be part of many good teams and and being coached by many good coaches. I mentioned the amount of moments and iconic kind of plays that you've been involved in over the last sort of 10 years, is, there, is there a, are you able to pick out one in particular? I suppose um, it would be tough with, with so many. Yeah, obviously every time you're playing a big game uh, it is good. My first cap for England is massive, the World Cup final is massive. Uh, every time you sing the national anthem is, uh, is fantastic. The Getting to the grand final, the drop goal, um, Great moment, and I think there were so many emotions in that game. Um, so many emotions in that game, and we thought we'd gone, and then we get a, a, a late penalty, and then a, a, obviously a late drop goal to get us to the grand final. Uh, we don't mention the grand final too much because I, I suppose every memory kind of moulds you as well. But I, I reckon I probably learnt more from that grand final as a player uh, than any game I've learnt in my life. So um, I think. It, there's a lesson in everything, um, and there was definitely a lesson in that grand final. To look to to Wakefield as well. We've obviously played at Wembley. I didn't think I'd be playing at Wembley again. And as I say, we've uh, there's I, 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 there's another chapter to be written yet. Um, hopefully, we've got another few I, uh, iconic moments as the season um, ends on. We're in a great position, um, top of the league, seven points clear, and aiming to. Um, to, to get Wakefield up and look, we knew last week we, we, we're to lose how tough it is, uh, everyone's going in for you so we'll have to uh, be on our metal, be on our, on our, our best game but um, yeah, hopefully there's a few more um, moments to be written. The number of accolades that you've achieved as well, personally as well as, as obviously as part of a team, it's I mean record breaking three in a row, Albert Goldfort medals, you're a Man of Steel winner Obviously, we mentioned the multiple England caps and grand finals, Challenge Cup final wins, obviously lifting the trophy with, with Leeds Rhinos, uh, kicking the uh, winning drop goal. Not winning the Lance Todd, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. I know it's a touchy subject. It's not, it's not. Uh, Richie Myler, obviously, um, I just assumed if you kicked the winning drop goal, you get the, uh, you get the Lance Todd. But Max were a bit disappointed, actually. Um, Max didn't think I should have got a uh, man at match in the, uh, the game against Sheffield in the 1985 Cup. So, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> Definitely. But you look, look at your career and look at the whether it's spanned over this, this sort of period of time. Do you feel like you're leaving the sport in a better place than the one that you entered it in? Yeah, I, I, I've loved the game. We actually, um, funnily enough, we had a, a transition meeting today with, from the RFL and um, Paul Sykes comes up, who's um, he's still going. I, I won't like to say how old Sykes is, but <laughs> I think the first comment was, I think it's the same age as Gailey. Um, I just got so so many good memories, and look, the sport has has transcended from 
when when I started playing, I started playing at six, and obviously you start knowing about Super League and stuff like that. In probably late two thousands, you know, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, when I got into the, the the Rhinos first team, and look, we, we've just been announced that we're playing in. Um, in Las Vegas. <laughs> so if you'd have said that to me 20 years ago, I'd have thought, um, you speaking crazy, you know, but it, the, the game's moved on um, no end. We try to get better and get a, uh, better every year. Obviously, NRL's pushing them boundaries and, and we're trying to, uh, to to jump on that as well. So look, teams playing in, uh, in Las Vegas. Um, I haven't looked at my schedule, but I, I won't mind going for that one if, uh, if Paolo let me have a few days off, but uh, I suppose you can now. Now you're uh, now you're not playing. Yeah, you, meant, you mentioned just right at the beginning there was an opportunity to carry on playing and, and still have this coaching role that you are moving into. And obviously, you mentioned over the last few weeks you've maybe changed your mind on that. How close were you to continuing next year? Um, it's a tough one, I suppose. It, it is a dreaded word, the retirement, um, especially a professional athlete. But I think in the back of your mind, you always know. And look, it's tough. Uh, I, I suppose ask Matthew Crowther, our physio. I think he'd be more happy than anyone that I'm retiring. <laughs> every Monday I come in or every Tuesday, he's like, there's always something new. And look, the the left leg's not been, been good for a while. And then you start adding little bits onto that. And as I say, it's it's the game. The, ga the game's the, the, the toughest part. Um, <laughs> I suppose your initial question: How far um, did you think that did you think you could play next year? And I reckon six or seven weeks ago, was probably the 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 time I realised that um, the game's too hard. And maybe maybe at Wembley, we got to Wembley early. Um, we, were, we were obviously playing after the Challenge Cup final. And you watch the likes of Bevan French and Jai Field running about the pitch. <laughs> I'm thinking. There's no way my legs are chasing them down next year. So, um, as I say, it's one of them where you don't ever want to believe it, but you, you know it's coming. And I, I look at it kind of different. I speak to Kirby um, quite often about it, and she's like, she'd be she'd be almost wanting me to go again. And I'm like, I'm totally content with everything I've done in the game, and I, I'm actually excited. I suppose at rugby league, we I, that's all I know, and. Uh, I'm looking forward to the other side where, where you become a coach and keep learning. And, and I can tell probably another thing that it is the academy. It, it, it really gets you. I remember watching a game, we, they had a curtain raiser and I was helping coach on the sideline. I think we had Barrow after and um, I did 80 minutes with the, uh, with the academy and I've come in to get ready for our game. And <laughs> I'm absolutely spent because I've lived every emotion of of that academy game, and um, there's no way you could um, you, you could do both. But it gave me a massive a massive buzz and a massive ex excitement. And look, if I can, I just mentioned the coaches. Uh, I've learned a lot over the years, and if I can just give that little bit of wisdom to to them young lads and and seeing them young lads improve. Uh, I know I've only been doing one night a week with um, with the academy, but. You see them improve, you see them improve as people, and um, I think that's massively rewarding. And I, I didn't realise coaching would be as rewarding as, as what it has been. And I think your initial question, that's made the transition, uh, the decision, sorry, to be a lot easier because I know that I can help them, them lads, I can help them come through. We've got some great scholarship lads who, who I helped coach last week, and we've, we've signed some quality players to come into the academy. and kind of get the academy up to speed where um, where the club's aiming to be as well, um, which is, is massively important and it's exciting as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the new chapter um, and saying goodbye to the old one. The old one's not quite done yet, though. No. You, you've mentioned, obviously, we have got a number of games still to go and your desire to go on and win a, win a championship grand final make sure that Wakefield are back in the Super League next year. How important is it to you that you, you end the season in the right way for yourself? Yeah, massively important for the club, for the for the team, for the group of players we've got now, which I mentioned how good the group is. Um, there's, there's only one 
one goal from now on, and that's um, get Wakefield to Super League, winning the grand final, um, and that's the that's a common driver for the rest of the team as well. So. Uh, yeah, massively important and we've got a lot of work to do. It's a long season. Um, we know that we're in, we're in the flow of it now. Um, and and that, yeah, that's a common goal and that's what everyone's striving towards. We will see you hang your boots up at the end of the 2024 season, but it's not going to be the last time that we'll see you pull on a Wakefield Trinity shirt though, is it? No. Um, I actually promised uh, a young lad who I see every week my boots the last game of the season, but um, <laughs> I'll have to keep one of them for a, another couple of months because, um, look, the RFL have uh, granted me a testimonial for uh, services to the game, and, and Wakefield have been have been great, Matt's been great, and uh, we're going to host uh, Castleford. Uh, I think it's January the twenty fourth um, in in a testimonial game. Uh, obviously, I had five great years at Castleford, been. Um, being a, an ex Castleford player and now a Wakefield player, there's that, um, I'm going to say friendly rivalry, but I don't think it's friendly, is it? Um, so that's, look, it's, it's it's a perfect team to play. Cass have been kind enough to uh, to bring a team over and, and Wakefield have been kind enough to host it for me. So um, I can't give the boots away just yet. There's, um, I'll have to uh, I'll have to keep on at least uh, one pair for, uh, for Jack. I'll have to keep fit as well. Um, which I didn't really realise. I was planning a nice holiday at the end of uh, <laughs> at the end of off season and uh, and maybe a, a few weeks uh, off of um, off of the fitness. But I suppose I have to keep fit. But no, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting day and uh, I'm, one I'm really looking forward to. It's great to hear that you will be pulling on the boots maybe once more. It's maybe just one more a little pre-season for you to go, I suppose. <laughs> maybe a week's pre-season. Yeah, uh, but. There's been a lot of people in, in your life that will have helped you get to the point you are at, you're at now. Obviously, a lot of people that have, will have made a lot of sacrifices um, throughout your life to make you into a professional rugby league player. I just want to leave the last word with yourself just to be able to thank those guys. Yeah, um, obviously, my parents, my mum running me about since six, seven years old. Uh, the, the length and breadth of the country. Um, my dad, obviously a massive sport. I mentioned the World Cup final. Uh, my dad come over to watch that. Uh, my, my family, obviously Kirby, my kids. Um, and without with, without getting too emo emotional, because it, it does when you think about all the memories. Uh, my, my good friend and uh, Peach's godfather, Craig Harrison, my agent, who's been um, with me since I'm probably 17. I, I met him on a golf day at 17, at least Rhinos. <laughs> and I've, we've probably had two conversations every day since. Um, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But no, um, he's been there through through the good times uh, and through the bad as well. Because look, rugby league, we always say it's a roller coaster. There's no better way of putting it. And you have good times, you have you have bad times, on the field, off the field, um, and. Yeah, Craig's been there through through them all, really, and yeah, all, all my family. They they always they're always coming, and we had a, a bit of a family barbecue last night, and uh, they're all saying um, he could do another year, he could do another year. But um, I think they'll miss coming to the games more than anyone. So um, no, thank everyone, thank the fans um, who have booed me, who made songs about me. <laughs> Some of them great, may I add. Um, I'll probably hear that one last time as well at the cast game. So, uh, no, just just everyone in the rugby league community, uh, without getting uh, soppy and a bit long-winded, um, I've, I've had an unbelievable time, uh, an unbelievable career, and more than I could have ever dreamt of. And um, I go out happy um, and excited for the next chapter.